Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 12th, and right now we're looking at the Camino Island Doppler radar three-dimensional view. This atmospheric river continuing to pour some precipitation back across the region, but first thing you'll notice is Everett, Edmonds, Seattle, getting a bit of rain shadowing here, and that's because the Olympic Mountains, you get in this westerly flow, you get a little bit of downsloping here, enough warming where you do not get that precipitation. The Chehalis Gap, however, is not as high, and so that atmospheric river is able to bring some of that precipitation back through that region, hit places like Tacoma, Federal Way, Kent, Normandy Park, SeaTac, and back into the Cascades. And if we go back out to the coastal radar here, you'll still see there's a lot of precipitation out here that Camino Island radar can't see out here because of the terrain feature that is the Olympic Mountains. The beams are blocked by that terrain out there. So anyway, let's take a wider look and you'll kind of see that atmospheric river all the way from the Hawaiian Islands pouring back up into the Pacific Northwest. We'll take a look at where this atmospheric river is going and what we have have headed for us as we go through this upcoming week and what's coming through the extended forecast as always. Now, if you just bought a Tempest weather station recently, you can check one of these out. Uh, you can put it in your whatever you want, you know, your living room, your bedroom, and you don't have to look at your smartphone. Just kind of a quick glance to see what is going on with your weather station. Uh, and also these wind meters, I have a couple of these very fun stuff. Some of them do temperature and pressure and they do high wind speed. I, I bring these when I go storm chasing. Very fun. Click on that link down below to save 10% off on one. And also the link down below has the Facebook page. If you want to go ahead and check that out, you can share with your friends and family family. Um, so looking at Seattle, Tacoma, still some flood watches out here, it includes Port Angeles and Forks and the hydrologic concerns are for Skagit and Whatcom County with the atmospheric river a bit heavier here, just north of Everett and Seattle. Also some gusty winds here this morning. I talked about that a couple days ago, but the worst should be now passing and those should be dying down as we go through the later morning hours of today. Uh, sneaker away threat still for some of the coastal areas. And this is going to be a recurring theme. We're going to have some nasty inversions setting up here as we go through this up coming week. Uh, I'll show you some of the latest on that here in a moment. You're going to want to check this out. And there's some freezing fog and sneaker wave and some air quality alerts down here across Southwest uh, Oregon also. So this is the wind speed as of last night. And as I'm scrolling through this morning, kind of see it starts to light up here as we go through the later, later morning hours. It's 8 o'clock, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1 p.m. this afternoon. Some gusty wind still for Vancouver Island, but that should be dying back a bit here as well. Then we go into tomorrow morning because that storm track starts to point way north where it's towards Haida Gwaii and some of Southeast Alaska as we really start to calm things down here across much of the region and we start to dry things out also. And then we scroll a little bit further off into the extended and you can see as we go through Thursday morning, we start to turn this offshore a bit. You can see some of these gusty winds coming across the Oregon Cascades, the Columbia River Gorge there as well. And then it gets a bit stronger as you go through the day on Friday. Look at that about, what, 10 a.m. on Friday morning. Pretty good easterly surge coming down the, the Columbia River Gorge, which is a sea level gap between Oregon and Washington right on the border. And look at some of the gusty winds all the way up towards the Washington and Oregon coast also. So, yeah, we're really going to dry things out and just kind of driving home the point that we are generally the worst has occurred. You can see maybe a gust up towards 50, some gust up into the 40s. I had somebody tell me it was gusting probably 40 plus out there towards Everett this morning also. So that should be on the wane. Now, taking a look at what is going on here, there is that ridge and the troughing here across the Gulf of Alaska, atmospheric river pointing into the area. And then you see the ridge building here across the West Coast of North America. And it becomes fairly strong as we go on in through the day tomorrow. That ridge hangs out and it continues to build as we go on in through Thursday morning. Look by the time we go towards Friday morning, I mean, this 585 at 500 millibars, that is what you would see generally like in July or August across the region. This is absolutely absolutely insane high pressure, but that does not necessarily mean warm conditions down into the lower elevations. And I'll show you what I mean on that here in a moment. We continue to squall off into the future and we go all the way through next week. And by the way, that should be about the Seahawks game. It looks like it's going to be pretty dry. We'll see what the inversion is doing. Hopefully the fog can burn off by the time the game starts. But yeah, we are going to likely be dry for the Seahawks game upcoming. And look at that ridge all the way up towards the south coast of Alaska, well up into Alaska. In fact, so here we go with the precipitation. And as we go through the day today, you can clearly see that lifting north found. There's about 10 o'clock tonight. We squat about 4 a.m. tomorrow morning, still impacting some portions of western BC and Vancouver Island. But as we go through the day on Tuesday, another very weak system kind of slides by. But you see, that doesn't mean much there for Washington, Oregon, Idaho, or Montana. And then we really start to dry out as we go through the extended forecast. As you can see, no precipitation expected over the next six days after this atmospheric river bounces north. 
And if we take a look at 850 millibar temperature, so you can see, I mean, this is at 5,000 feet and you got to get to that silver line to get some below freezing temperatures of 5,000. Not a good look here, folks. This is really going to do some damage to the snowpack coming up. And then as we scroll off in towards Wednesday and then Thursday, look at that Thursday afternoon, look at some of these warm temperatures really climbing up the coastline there exceptionally warm for this time of year at 5,000 feet. And if we scroll off in towards about Friday, about what is that Friday morning right here? Look at Salem 18 or 19 Celsius. And I show that because I wanted to show you what's going on at the same time at the surface. Look at that. Some temperatures down towards freezing, just very warm air aloft with very cold air trapped. That is what's known as an inversion. And if we take a look at that sounding, I again kind of stopped it there on Friday morning for Salem. Look at just how warm it is there at 5,000 feet versus what's going on. You're very close to freezing at the surface versus, you know, you're talking about 65 degrees at the higher elevation. So this is definitely going to be a time if you want to go hiking, hiking and get out to the mountains, you're going to be dealing with some much warmer conditions. It'll be nice, some nice sunny skies and some light winds versus that very cold uh, at the surface there for places like in the Willamette Valley. And this is going to go for Western Washington portions of Eastern Washington, Oregon as well, especially in those lower elevations like the Columbia River uh, Basin, for example. And if we look at the soundings for Salem, this is 850 millibar temperatures here. And again, if we're talking about 18 or 19, see that's approaching some of these all-time daily record maxes. And if you look all the way out towards August, I mean, the 75th percentile line is like 16.5 and you're going to be dealing with 18 at Salem. So yeah, this, this ridge is like something that you would expect in summer, but that's not going to translate to some very warm temperatures down below. And same thing here for 500 millibars. I talked about 585. And again, that's going to be exceeding what we get even in some of our stronger ridges during the summertime. So pretty exceptional stuff coming in here. And if we look at the artificial intelligence, I'll scroll through there and you'll see the ridge building and continue to build northbound here as we go on and through Friday morning. And again, it kind of hangs out as we go through that next weekend. How is it going to break down? Well, that's tough to say. It shows kind of a weak system moving into the Oregon California border there. We'll continue to watch that and still some ridging with us thereafter. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see until the models get into a little bit of better agreement on how that ridge is going to break down. We'll be watching it though, of course. Now, if we take a look at the ensemble. Artificial intelligence ensemble, this is percentages of dealing with a pretty excessive ridge here. And, and again, this is 500, uh, 576. And what I showed you here was potentially getting up towards 585 all the way up towards Quileute. But you can see the ridge there. Very high likelihood that this is going to occur between 90 and 100% chance that ridge coming up here as we go towards the next weekend. And if we look at two meter temperature anomalies, this is where it gets interesting. If you look at some of the higher terrain, you can kind of see what we're dealing with on Tuesday afternoon. Just absolutely ridiculous ridiculously warm across some of the Oregon, Washington Cascades. Some places, you know, 20, 25 degrees above normal for this time of year. But by the time you go towards Wednesday morning, you see the inversion out there. Uh, very warm again across the higher terrain, but again, the inversion being trapped in the lower levels of the atmosphere. Look by the time we go towards Friday morning, some of Western Washington, Willamette Valley trapped in the inversion. So a great time to get out to the mountains if you can coming up here as we go through this upcoming week and visibility in miles. I'll scroll through this here pretty quick and you can kind of see that it's calling for some fog as we go through Tuesday morning. Here we go on in towards Wednesday morning. You can see things pretty socked in across Western Washington, some portions of the Eastern Washington and Eastern Oregon and get in, in on the fog here as well. And then we go through Thursday morning, again, kind of socking things in again across a lot of the lower elevations, nice and glorious, sunny and warm across the higher terrain. So looking at the wider view of things and looking at the extended forecast, is there any sign of change coming up here? Well, I mean, you can see that warm air all the way up into Northwest Alaska, up towards Northwest Alaska, Northwest Canada. It continues to show some cold air try to make its way towards the Rocky Mountains, but the Rocky Mountains are right here. This is not a favorable track for getting uh, cold air down into the lower elevations, much less lower elevation snowfall. But again, maybe we'll start to get a bit of a chillier pattern here towards the end of the month. It's really the only thing you can kind of take away from that. But again, it's so far out. We'll just have to wait and see. And we'll check back on that daily. Now, looking at precipitation, there's our atmospheric river moving through here. It bounces north. That weak system slides through. And then, man, we really dry out for a period of time as we go all the way on in towards uh, July 20th. And then that shows that weak system kind of sliding in here. It doesn't look like it's bringing much. But again, we'll, we'll watch that. It's kind of far off in the forecast to get too caught up in those details. And we go all the way through the 15-day period. And you see not much occurring. Cold air staying east of the Rocky Mountains or that Arctic high dropping down into some of the northern states. Not us in the 
Pacific Northwest. 8 to 14 day above normal signal. That makes sense, but there's going to be some inversions out there that are no doubt going to keep places below normal during this time period and very dry. 8 to 14 day as well. Check out the Patreon page. Feeling a little bit better today, but still under the weather. I don't know if you can hear that in my voice. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, uh, we'll just do this all again tomorrow. We'll break everything down. We'll try to see how this pattern is going to change and we'll try to get some model agreement on that. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, um, have a good day and I will catch you guys in the next forecast.